In Malibu, California, you will find some of the best beaches and some of the best surfing in the United States. It has been home to countless celebrities over the years like Leonardo DiCaprio, Janet Jackson, Brad Pitt, Paris Hilton, Jack Nicholson, and Miley Cyrus, just to name a few. But despite its popularity, it's actually a pretty small city with a total population of just over 10,000. Anybody who's ever been to Malibu knows that it's actually kind of a sleepy town, but that's part of what makes it so desirable as an escape from the bigger city of LA. And all of this demand in such a small area has created a hot spot for luxury real estate with countless homes in this region selling in the highest price ranges imaginable with beachfront homes going for as much as $200 million. Today, we're not here to just talk about any real estate in Malibu, although there are some pretty impressive listings out there. We are instead going to be diving into the formation of what is on track to be the most expensive neighborhood in America. And the craziest part is that this neighborhood is only set to have five homes in total. The case is a development of five homes located in Malibu with a nod to mid-century modern architecture. A luxury developer named Scott Gillen is in the process of building five ultra luxury properties on a 24 acre parcel of land that he scooped up in 2017 for 50 million bucks. I heard you paid $50 million for a piece of dirt. Is that true? It is, and I actually said it was a gross amount of money. <laughs> gross amount of money. It was. That $50 million price tag, by the way, was the most amount of money ever spent on a plot of land in Malibu. And over the course of the past six years, Scott has been tirelessly working to build out this gated community, with the first of the bunch actually just hitting the market for sale for a whopping 70 million bucks. We've talked about some pretty incredible properties here on the channel in the past, including touring the one a couple years back, touring the Strada Vecchia property last year, and featuring tons of other infamous mega mansions throughout the years of videos. But the case is truly a special development project, you guys. You're in for a treat with today's video. So like I said, this all started back in 2017 when the luxury real estate developer, Scott Gillen, scooped up this plot of land in Malibu, this unlike any other plot of land in Malibu. In fact, it's kind of unlike any other plot of land in all of California. The case in Malibu, hands down, is one of the most unique offerings in the world for the high-end residential buyer. The dirt section here in this aerial shot of the property from Google is a bit outdated, but it shows us the dirt that Scott's working with. It's right off a of Pacific Coast Highway, sitting up on a bluff, overlooking the Pacific Ocean. You see the ocean right there, and then you look at the mountain, and you see the houses just in line with the horizon. The houses almost collapse into the hill. And when we zoom in, you can see this road that winds down towards the lot and the houses are kind of starting to take shape in this image with one house here, one house up here, another one here, the fourth house, which is being built here, and then the final one, which is perched over here in the corner. When you come around the turn off Malibu Canyon and you look across the way and you, when you come through the gate, there's a whole, there's a whole world in there. If we zoom out a little bit, you can see that this community is basically in the heart of Malibu. It's sitting right down the street from Nobu, Soho House, and the pier. If we look at the developer's website, we have another angle of the case that shows us what the big lot looks like today. Here you can see that these homes are totally underway with one, two, three, four, five, all of them framed up with roofs on, windows installed, and pools built. I feel like we've spent so much time over the years talking about properties that were just concepts, meaning some developer had some big dream or idea, then threw up some renderings online, but a lot of those projects ended up either in bankruptcy or never even end up being built. I love how the case is just as wild and ambitious as any of these other projects, but it's actually coming to fruition as we speak. Each of the five homes here have their own special name and their own set of specs. Even though they all do have this mid century modern style and they all have around 11,000 square feet of livable space, the developer said that he wants to be sure that if neighbors end up visiting each other, no house will be exactly like the next. The names of these houses are the Butterfly House, the Cantilever House, the Edge, the Flat House, and the Glass Tunnel. What is awesome is we actually had some great renderings of all of these projects up on Scott Gillen's website, so let's check those out together next. Okay, so this is the site for Unvarnished, which is Scott Gillen's design and development company. You can see we have all the houses listed here at the top, so we'll check those out in a second. But first, 
Let me just scroll down. I want to show you guys a little quote of his here at the bottom. So Scott Gillen said, in 2017, I took a leap of faith, broke records, and dropped $50 million on a plot of land overlooking Malibu County in the Pacific Ocean, knowing that there would be buyers for the case, a gated enclave consisting of five of the most luxurious single family homes ever built. He's got a lot of confidence and I've got a huge amount of respect for him for trying to pull it off. Anyways, let's scroll back up here. So let's just poke around. We'll look at the cantilever house first and just click this little explore this home button. House one has this massive cantilever roof with no upright post from a structural point. Let's scroll down here a bit and just tab through some of the renderings. First, we've got the entry. So you're looking straight through the front door at the ocean, which is awesome. Here's a view from the massive great room, which has this huge wall of windows that opens up and you can see from the inside that cantilevered roof that's going over the covered patio. This gives us just like a taste of the finishes and the furnishings, really nice, but kind of mild color palette in here. I like the look of the kitchen a lot. Here is what would be the office. This obviously would be the master suite. You've got this huge walnut tub. I saw Scott in an interview say that this tub would cost something like $100,000 as custom made. And then they wrap it up with a shot of the master bedroom. Ton of natural light coming in here. Mountain views, nice spot. If we go back here, next we have the butterfly house. So this one's 10,700 square feet, five bedrooms, seven bathrooms. The butterfly house at the case. The roof looks like a butterfly. If you guys haven't seen this mid-century modern style before, this butterfly roof pitch was actually pretty popular back in the 50s and the 60s. Similar finish palette in this one, but I love how the great room is on a corner. It kind of reminds me of one of those corner unit penthouses in Manhattan. Tons of natural light dumping into this room, not only from those big sliders, but from these clear story windows up here. A lot bigger kitchen, a lot bigger of an island, a lot more storage, a couple refrigerators, a couple of ovens, a wine fridge here in the back. I mean, this is legit. Here's the office in this house with views of the ocean. They call this room the media room. This is pretty cool. Great master bedroom here with the views, the big fireplace, big boxed off shower here, similar walnut soaking tub here, and then you've got access to what looks like a jacuzzi right off your master. Okay, that was the butterfly house. Now we're on to the edge. This one is 10,500 square feet, five bedrooms and eight bathrooms. House three we call the edge. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure why they call this one the edge. I don't know if it has something to do with the roof line or maybe it's because it's literally sitting right on the edge of that bluff. Looking at the photos, this one seems a lot darker and more intimate. Maybe it's just the lighting or the time of day that they're using in this rendering. That shows it a lot more open though. So this is the big great room, but I do think we've got some lower ceilings here than the other two houses. Similar finished package over there in the kitchen. This is cool. So I guess this is like a long hallway that connects you to, who knows, a bunch of bedrooms. We've got our office on the left and then a huge wine storage room here on the right. And then check out that master closet. Wow, you've got a huge island, tons of storage. And then I guess if you need to take a load off from looking at all your clothes, you can lay down on this little bed. Okay, now we are moving on to the flat house. This one's 10,500 square feet, four bedrooms, seven bathrooms. So this is the lowest bedroom count. House four is the only house the roof is completely flat. Typical mid-century modern home. And apparently this one is kind of secluded from the rest of the houses. I think it's the most private lot of the bunch. Huge deck with tons of probably teak wood here. A big pool that kind of L shapes with the jacuzzi here in the back. Great perspective here. I love the architecture of this house. I love these shadows that are being cast down here from this overhang. Super cool. Here's the office with some killer mountain views. Oh, I guess that master bedroom leads right out onto that deck. Master bath is a little small in comparison to the other houses, but I guess that's kind of to be expected. This house is a little bit smaller. And then they're saying this is the foyer. So this is what you see when you walk in the front door of your house if you're the buyer of this one. Okay, and last but not least, the glass tunnel. This one's almost 12,000 square feet, five bedrooms, nine bathrooms. I think this is the biggest one of the bunch. House five is all the way by itself on the west. The other four houses are on the east. It's the only house that has its own real private drive, which is roughly 500 feet long. Here at the entry, it's kind of funny. It doesn't have some big mega mansion look to it. It's super modest. It definitely is mid-century modern. But then this is what you get whenever you walk into your great room. So high ceilings, huge spaces, 
incredible. They labeled this one as master seating, so I guess this is like a separate little lounge area off your master bedroom. Here's the media room, so it's not a full-blown movie theater, but it's an area to go and watch a movie. And then the kitchen in this one also is butted up against that corner. Insane views, kind of a weird statue down here. I don't know what that is, but awesome space. Now, if you've never heard of Scott Gillen before, he's a pretty fascinating character himself. Scott started off in life as a stunt driver for the Dukes of Hazard back when he was a teenager. After that, he moved on to direct car commercials and a few TV series. He was actually a director for 17 years before he got into the house flipping business. Fast forward to today though, and as of the last report, he has built and sold 26 homes with around eight more homes in construction. And his primary focus area for development is Malibu. It's always been Malibu actually and believe it or not Scott is one of the only luxury spec builders out there in all of Malibu. He did an interview with The Real Deal a few years back and gave them the scoop on what a typical day in the life looks like for him. He wakes up every day at 5 30 a.m. After that he goes to his home gym. Then he heads up to the kitchen to eat some oatmeal before taking his daughter to school. Once he drops off his daughter he lights his first cigar of the day and heads to the case project by about 7:40. 45 a.m. He does a bunch of work with contractors and agents till lunchtime when he goes to the Soho house in Malibu for a salad, chicken, an Arnold Palmer, and a cookie. After lunch at 1 p.m., he lights up his second cigar of the day and gets back to work on the projects. By 5 p.m., he heads to his car garage to spend time with his collection of 18 cars, and this is where he enjoys his last cigar of the day. Then by 7 p.m., he's ready for dinner with the family, either at home or a nearby restaurant. Seems like a pretty simple life to me, but when you've got that many projects going on and you've got millions of dollars at work, it's probably a little bit stressful. Maybe that's why he smokes so many cigars. Other than the case, the only other project of Scott's that I could dig up that he's done recently is called The New Castle. This is another mega mansion spec build in Malibu that he built on the lot of an old castle that sadly burned down many years back. The home is over 15,000 square feet with seven bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, and is currently for sale for 35 million bucks as of the filming of this video. It's a beautiful three-story home with walls of windows that face the ocean. The inside Inside has a simplistic style with a lot of similar details as what we saw in the case. The great room is massive with a bunch of custom furniture. There's a long 400 foot private driveway that takes you up to the house. And obviously there's views from basically every room. This project is amazing and I would imagine that it would be highly desirable just based on the location and the views and the finishes and all of that. But what's weird about this property is that Scott initially listed it for sale for $75 million back in 2000. 2016. This $85 million showstopper, dubbed the New Castle, is the most expensive home for sale in all of Malibu. And the price has been up and down a bunch since then, but there's also been some massive price drops over the years. And now the price is all the way down to 35 million and the place still hasn't sold. $85 million. Convince me that you're getting value for that money. I don't know how to do that. Good. I'm glad you're on it. I have no idea why this home hasn't sold yet, but Scott has hired a number of different real estate agents on this one over the years. He's currently working with Aaron Kerman on this listing, who is the same listing agent for the case as well. So who knows, maybe Aaron is going to be able to get the case sold and the new castle sold. We'll see. Malibu real estate in general is crazy expensive. It's an area that any Californian will tell you is currently desirable, has always been desirable, and probably always will be desirable. And going back to the case, from what I read, Scott Gillen already has one of the five homes at the case under contract, along with another one that I mentioned earlier, which is currently for sale for 70 million bucks. I'm sure the remaining few houses will hit the market soon as they finish up, and there's no doubt that it's going to be a tough task to sell all five of those houses in this market. But my guess, as far as a total investment is concerned, is that Scott Gillen probably has somewhere around 125 to 100 150 million dollars invested into this project by the time he's done with it so if he gets his target price for these houses he's going to walk away with a couple hundred million dollar profit there's a hundred to 125 people a day here on any given day it's a big undertaking this is going to be an amazing community i'm wishing him the best of luck i'll see you guys next time